Okay. Hello, welcome back. So let's um, spend a couple of videos unpacking the concept of this um, inertia matrix. See what's in it, what does it mean, how we can get manipulated, get more information, and learn a little more about what this inertia matrix is. So to start, do this. To start, let's, as always, consider the this bean that I have. Well, let's make it closed. I have this bean. Actually, it's a little too big, but that's fine. And let's consider a body fixed uh, frame attached to the body at some point, some point on the body. So if we have this uh, frame, what I can do is given this um, XYZ frame, I can write the inertia matrix I for this XYZ frame. And let's for now, for simplicity, assume that this point is fixed. So first thing to, to note here is as, as I change the orientation of the frame that I attach to the body, this matrix I changes, changes its value. So the, the elements of the matrix defend, de, de, depend on the how you fix the orientation of this frame fixed to the body. So that matters. So if I want to write the kinetic energy, again, remember it's a fixed point. So what I can write is kinetic energy is one half vector omega, well, the matrix version of Omega transpose this matrix I Omega. So sometimes I um, I I place these um, brackets. Sometimes I forget from the context it, it should be visible whether we are talking about a matrix or a scalar. And a vector obviously has that arrow on top. So this is my kinetic energy. I mentioned as I change the orientation of this frame and I fix it to the body at a different orientation, the value of this matrix I changes. But something to note here is that kinetic energy shouldn't change. So that, that is a quantity, energy of the system you can't, um, the, the energy doesn't change, doesn't matter how you write your equation. So as you change um, I, you would expect, um, as you change your um, frame, you would expect to get a different I, but funny enough, the kinetic energy does not change. So that's one thing to remember. Um, so that, oops, what did I do? Let's pretend at this time my body is rotating with some angular velocity vector omega. So at this particular instant, it is also possible for me to change my perspective a little. And let me try a different color. And talk about rotation about this instantaneous axis of rotation a with some rate um, phi dot or omega and if i consider that i can also know t is one half i about this axis a so this is a a scalar i the same kind of i we, were, we have been using um, in 2D motions and in simpler cases, times omega, 
and omega is also a scalar. It is the norm of the omega vector or um, in the axis angle kind of notation, this was phi dot. So I have these two and they are equal, oops. And they're equal. So from here I can, so this is, this is the energy, energy of the system. Doesn't matter how you look at it, they are the same. One half I A omega, omega squared. Omega squared equals one half vector omega transpose matrix I vector omega. So I have this identity. Now what I can do, divide everything essentially by the left-hand side of the equation because all those are all um, scalar values. So I can divide by the left-hand side. I can write one equals, and I'm going to break this IA omega squared into two um, a square root of IA times omega. So, and it is going to be one over omega square root of IA times omega transpose multiply it by my a times one over omega square root of i a omega. So this is an identity that I have. And now I'm going to give this thing a name, call it rho and con equ equivalently this one is just a transpose of the same thing. So in this case, rho transpose i rho equals one. So a weird identity, who cares about this? So let's see what, what we are doing. This vector rho is, let me write it down. It is in a vector form. It's one over omega square root of I A omega. So it is a vector in the same direction as omega. So it, whatever angular velocity of your object is, this vector rho is along the, the axis of rotation. And Norm of rho is norm of omega divided by just this scalar, omega square root of i a. And remember that omega is actually the norm of vector omega. So from here, um, norm of rho is one over square root of i, I a. But also, let me drop the a because um, i is the and rho are the same axis. So the norm of this rho is actually inversely related to the moment of inertia about that axis of rotation. So as my omega, I, the omega vector changes, so my body is rotating about a different axis. I can construct this row however I, I, I can. And the norm of that is related to the moment of inertia about that particular axis. So let's go a bit further and discuss rho slightly more. Rho is a vector in, in this XYZ frame, in the body fixed XYZ frame. So I can write it as rho is x sum x i plus some y j plus some z k. So uh, a very general form of um, vector rho in the x y z frame. And now if I plug this 
or in matrix form, row is x, y, z. Now, if I go plug this uh, definition of row into um, that matrix equation, uh, identity matrix equation that I had, what I end up with is some equation, um, i x x x dot squared plus i y y y dot squared plus i z z um, z. What did I say? Did I say x dot y squared? I don't know. Mm, plus two i x y times x times y plus two i x z times x times z plus two i what am i missing y z times y times z equals one so ah, i don't need this level of emphasis i just an underline underscoring it is enough so if my row is the axis of rotation i can plug everything in and what i end up with is an equation that shows me where the tip of that vector will look like in a space and if you look closely and remember from i don't know analytical geometry class this oops is the equation for an ellipsoid. Ellip, ellipsoid. An ellipsoid is a 3D version of ellipse. So it has three, um, it's, a, it's a sphere squished and extended along the three dimensions. So then let's, step back a little and ponder what we did. So rho is a vector along the direction that the, the system, my system is rotating. Its norm is inversely rela related to um, um, moment of inertia. And if I just look at all different axes and look at where the tip of this vector rho is going to look like it's it looks like an ellipsoid so let me zoom in make this what color this color beautiful so it it is going to look like an ellipsoid so it is an ellipsoid I hope it, it, it is clear that it is an ellipsoid. Uh, anyways, this, this is an ellipsoid centered at that point O, the center of my origin. And oops, the distance of point O to any point on, on, the, on this shell is inversely related to my um, moment of inertia about that particular axis. So distance to any point on ellipse to a point on this ellipsoid is equal to one over a square root of i about that particular axis that the, that the vector is pointing. Or conversely, i is one over this norm of rho squared. So uh, a few things, although I have written this, um, let me see, let me see what are the best sequence of information. So let me give it a name. This ellipse that I have defined, 
This is called um, ellipsoid of inertia. Ellipsoid of inertia. And it really tells me, it's a very, first of all, very good visualization how the, the, the inertia, moments of inertia of the body kind of looks like in a space. But more importantly, as we were discussing, if you want to know what is the moment of inertia about a particular axis, you can look at this um, ellipsoid and see how, what is the distance from the center to that ellipsoid. And that gives you information about the axis, um, moment of inertia about that axis. And from there you can see that an ellipsoid has two important things. One is, um, The, the major um, axis of the ellipsoid, which is the, the longest um, side of the ellipse. And it also has another um, direction perpendicular to that, that has the, the smallest distance or diagonal of these um, ellipsoid. So rotation from there, rotation, about ellip ellipsoids um, longest axis longest axis corresponds to lowest moment of inertia and rotation about ellipsoids smallest axis corresponds to the largest moment of inertia. And there is a third axis, third axis perpendicular to those two, it it is two. It is just a a an, it, uh, a medium kind of uh, moment of inertia. And these three axes, the ones along which the body has the lowest, the one along which the body has the least, and another one perpendicular to those two, are called principal axes mm. and these are quite co convenient to work with we will we see it in next video let me double check or did you come? Uh, yes, I'll talk about this in the next video, so I'm not going to um, spoil it now. And one other thing I wanted to mention before, but I didn't, is that although we, we came up with the equation for this ellipsoid, given the, the particular values of i, x, 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 y, and so on, and these are dependent on what kind of frame we look at. So if I change my frame, these values change. But this ellipsoid of inertia is fixed to the body. It doesn't matter how you're changing your body fixed uh, frame, how you place it on the, on the body. The ellipsoid of inertia remains fixed to the body and it always moves with the body. And you can, um, first of all, easily construct it if you know the geometry of your body and your some inertial matrix about one and any, um, any arbitrary axis. You can construct these ellipsoid and visualize it. It's a very nice 
um, visualization of you know how your essentially your um, inertia properties are distributed in the body how and how the moments of inertia look like and it gives you some sense of what are these um, maximal and minimal um, moments of inertia which directions correspond to those and you can visually construct the principal axis in the next video we will see how we can um, directly get to those using linear algebra and yes I think that's all I have for this video let me check if there's anything else I needed to mention I mentioned everything yeah that that is all I have for ellipsoid of inertia next video we will talk about more about this principal axis and yeah we'll see how it goes until then